jump right into my first question. And uh, Archana, for years, there have been debates around why HR hasn't been able to take a seat at the table. However, as the world of work gets more disrupted and the talent market becomes employee centric, CHROs and their teams are leading boardroom meetings as work and people have become the CEO's top agenda now. So in this evolving role of HR, how do you see the role of L&D become imperative and how are their goals evolved? Or how have their goals evolved from just people's goals to business goals? So it's a wonderful topic to be speaking on, Yasmin. And uh, the reason is that um, businesses have learned to do their business differently, are having to learn to do business differently. There are completely new different business models and ways uh, in which people are touching their customers and for us patients. And on top of that, there are new ways of doing things. So people are interacting differently you know, with their customers, with each other. So there's the organizational dimension as well. And for all of these, I think the one common thing is that uh, it's we need to be able to understand the new context and do things differently. It means new skills. Uh, if I have to now know, my sales rep has to know how to connect with doctors virtually, there's absolutely no way they can do without understanding how to use that digital medium or to have that digital skill. Or if my lab scientist has to use, um, uh, you know, do faster uh, the analysis of the products that are being made, they have to know these digital skills. They have to know how to interact virtually. So there's a whole range of things that people have to learn uh, in order to do their work. And it applies to not just a few people, it's for everybody. So it's kind of, in a way, created, um, everybody's equal. I need to learn as much as my frontline does, because even I'm having to do things differently. So absolutely, it has become a very important priority, uh, because business cannot be delivered if we don't pick up these skills. Exactly. I think it has these past three years have been such a game changer for everybody. I think not just as you said, not just HR and LND, not just frontline workers. Everybody had to go through that whole phase of reinventing themselves because every day was a new day. Skills were changing. Demands of job roles were changing. Everything was changing. So have you been happy? Have you been happy with the way the role of LND has evolved in these three years, especially Archana? Absolutely. I think they've been dragged into the center stage, <laughs> whether they, are, they didn't really have a choice because now, you know, we used to talk of business partners, yes. HR, and now we talk of L&D and capability partnering because L&D from being a classroom or an online training provider has become partners with business to define a different business outcome and understand what is needed in terms of people skills, capabilities, and different types of talent in order to deliver that mandate. Mm -hmm. So they're exploring sitting in uh, business meetings, sitting alongside the CEO, sitting alongside the HR business partner to find a complete solution yeah. uh, to of, if these are the business outcomes. And therefore they are learning to design programs and learning journeys in a way that they learn from various people, academicians, practitioners, different industries, uh, get people to learn Mm -hmm. get people to practice uh, quickly on projects and correct themselves. So it's it's a completely different way of um, delivering learning and learning outcomes. It's more business outcomes than it has been in the past. It's no longer about one-way uh, conversations and delivering content. Exactly. It's just no longer about understanding what works in terms of learning. It's about understanding what works for the business first and aligning it to the learning leads of the business and the people of that you're, you know, associated with. So uh, thanks for sharing that, Archana. So how do you think and your L&D teams, you know, reinvent themselves to win this war for talent and also enable businesses? Have you what kind of examples are you seeing? How are the L&D teams kind of reimagining their own roles? Yeah, so they are as uh, they. Are, I don't find the L&D team anymore in the L&D center. First of all, they are forever in some business or the other, sitting in in some business meeting. So that's one big shift that's happened. Um, it's that is one. Second is they are far more uh, attuned to individuals and their learning needs. Uh, they're not no longer into mass producing programs that can just be pushed out. So it's about how individuals learn what is specifically required for that unit or for that intact team. So they certainly are doing that. And the third thing is about designing. So it's not about just picking up canned stuff and pushing it out. It's about stitching together various offerings uh, 
mm-hmm. uh, whether there is a program on uh, you know, AI, there's something on ML, there is something on human-centered design, for example. You know, getting all of these pieces together that eventually help the people to deliver to what is needed uh, mm-hmm. to support the business agenda. So it's the designing part and then measuring the actual impact of that, seeing people through to that through just not the content and academicians, but even enabling what we call now performance coaches. So these are people who've kind of done the roles before and they're working alongside people on their projects mm-hmm. to actually help them do a quick testing of their learning, take it, apply, and then learn from there as well. So it's it's a completely different kind of uh, L&D function than what we're used to. Exactly. And as as the whole learning landscape and ecosystem has evolved, uh, it is about, as you said, creating those hyper-personalized journeys for your people. You cannot just give a one-size-fits-all to everybody. No mass production, as you very rightly said. So understanding those needs, understanding where business is lead, uh, heading to, what kind of skills will work for what kind of a business unit within your organization. I think those are going to be very important roles for the l and team. Uh, Ajana, any examples that you can share or any specialized programs and initiatives have you initiated for your l and teams in the recent past You know, to equip them with the latest trends, knowledge, and skills to meet this growing evolving landscape of learning? So, uh, you know, what? this is an interesting question, Yasmin, because I believe that the world today is about democratization of learning. Exactly. It's not about me telling anybody what they need to learn. It's about them discovering what they need to learn in order to deliver their mandate. So honestly, if you ask me what training programs is your learning team, I don't know, because they know they can go and get whatever they need mm-hmm. uh, and they will have the resource to learn. I know some of them are doing the designing, learning how to do uh, you know, great learning journey design. I know some of them have picked up courses on understanding the business better, the ones who are not. So each of those areas, they are picking up their own stuff and and learning those. But their biggest learning all happens in the business. Yes. I think it's all about learning while doing. I think learning in the flow of work, that's what everybody is talking about, how important that has become. So uh, how about creating that learning culture. You said it is about democratization of learning and I absolutely agree with that. But uh, you do have to sometimes change some mindsets. You have to create that learning culture. How is Dr. Reddy's working on that, Archana? If you could share something on that. Yeah, you know, we have a great starting point. If you talk to our uh, MD and coach, I mean, uh, Prasad, hmm. uh, you know, as he says, it's his. he wants this to be an organization where every person can be the best version of themselves. And how we translate it into our work is to create a um, context in which people can meet their potential through learning and through what the work that they do. Now, um, given this is the context and this is the ethos of the organization, we've done a lot of work. So of course, we brought technology. So a very good learning experience platform to sit on our learning platform. And I think I'm proud to say that the offtake on that is pretty much 100% of the organization has signed up. Uh, approximately 30 days of learning per year is what people are doing and they're doing it on their own time and they're doing it on weekends and it's available to people anything and world-class resources all available on the platform this is one the second is a lot of curated learning journeys for people so we've taken cohorts of people so all country general managers for example, they just need to look at risk differently today. They need to look at digital differently. They need to look at sales and marketing differently. So creating a whole learning journey for them. Or my plant managers, it's no longer about getting an order and filling it. It's about implementing new digital tools, for example. New productivity, dealing with a faster pace of products coming into their plants. So new product pipeline. So there's a lot of uh, business context. The third one really is about um, uh, role modeling. I think a lot of us are proud to say, my uh, management committee colleagues, and you know, are really stand out for their commitment and their curiosity to learning. And I can say that they, we've been together. For example, listening into seminars coming out of, uh, you know, being done in California at two o'clock in the night, and we we just we are together and we created a group called the Learning Owls, oh. uh, and we are like exchanging notes on that, and we are listening. And we're learning from each other. So great role modeling by a lot of our leaders and uh, all kinds of topics. So it's learning is not going to come by me learning to do recruitment well. It could come from any other industry. 
Exactly. So it's about being curious about what's happening in the world more broadly than just about your own function. The last one I'd say is that we've kind of focused on creating a lot of rituals. Mm -hmm. And one I uh, very feel really good about sharing is that we started something called the People Development Week, mm -hmm. which is essentially a week-long celebration of learning. And you'll be amazed to know that this is a no-push program. I mean, during one week, we just put together a whole lot of uh, sessions mm -hmm. and learning programs that a lot of our leaders do and a lot of external speakers come and do. So the last time we held it, we had like 200 plus sessions conducted during that week. And you'd be amazed to know the number. I always am amazed to see the number. We've run it now a couple of times. 20,000 plus people who wow. participated in this. And it just tells us that the people are hungry to learn. Yeah. They want the opportunity. They want the resources. And they want to participate in doing things. So it's just about finding that sweet spot, giving them the opportunity, giving them the time and the resources. So we do have some of these rituals that we pride. We also do a ritual around celebrating people who teach. Wow. So, um, you know, a program where people nominate and we get thousands of nominations, literally again, saying, I learned he was my buddy, he was my mentor, he taught me on this project, or generally he's my role model. Wow. And then we pick up a few from there and celebrate them. So some of these rituals are also important because it tells us, uh, you know, it builds that culture, as you said, so very important. Yeah, I think I think the very, very lovely uh, examples you shared, Archana. I think I, our audience watching this would be really inspired to kind of follow this because sometimes creating learning journeys or a culture of learning becomes a challenge for L&D leaders. But the way you put it, the kind of, uh, as you said, role, role modeling it, as you said, having those rituals around it, celebrating learning. I think these are very important to set the tone, set the right culture for why people should learn. And once you democratize it and give them an opportunity to learn at their own pace, at their own will, I think it gives them a, a better uh, it's a better way rather than a push uh, it works better than a push factor there so great examples thank you so much for sharing Archana uh, my uh, concluding question for this video interview would be as a CHRO yourself uh, what has been your own personal learning on approaching skilling and learning for the workforce and how do you think can a learning leader and teams successfully drive these skilling programs you did share some great examples as personally what more could you add to that Archana yeah, I, mean, I, would, I would pick from all that I've said. And personally, I want to be a role model for learning by my curiosity. I'm always learning and my team knows it and everybody on, you know, in my organization knows that I, I learn all the time. Yes. I think the second is about, um, you know, just constantly giving message to people that we want you to learn, mm. that we respect that. And uh, we even give you opportunities to grow you know, in completely different areas. So I have people from manufacturing getting, for example, to risk and assurance roles, or I have people from uh, manufacturing getting into digital roles. And we're saying we will enable this for you because growth today is not necessarily vertical. Absolutely, Growth is in everywhere. So, I mean, building this ethos, personally, I take responsibility to, to do that for my team. And of course, um, uh, create, um, you know, provide the right focus and resources to my uh, to my learning team to be able to respond to the needs that uh, uh, that are coming out from the business. Yes. And I, I remember this, the first time I started this, we had to push. Yeah. But now, I mean, I can't cope with the demand. Everybody wants a learning journey. <laughs> Every group comes back. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great example for others to follow. I think uh, thank you so much, Archana. So much to learn from you on that. That learning as a as a, as an ecosystem is about. Uh, you know, democratizing it for your people, putting the right technology in place, putting the right resources, the right content, and then helping people understand how important learning is for them and help them choose what they want to learn and how and when they want to learn it. And finally, as you said, again, I'll repeat that, that it's about role modeling as leaders. It is our responsibility to become role models and create those rituals around learning that help people learn better and, and you know, become better learners in the journey of their own careers.